In the year 2007, a team of scientists have discovered the existence of many parallel universes. A probe from Earth is soon deployed by the U.S. government to reach one of these worlds called Adelpha. Minutes after landing, an intelligent life form damages the probe. On Earth, an unforeseen backlash of energy is created by this action, and the result is a constantly growing black hole, which threatens the very existence of our planet. Cutter Slade, a U.S. Navy SEAL commander, is charged with the safety of three scientists who have been chosen to travel to this new world. His assignment is to locate the probe and make sure the scientists complete their job in time. Now, the destiny of our planet is in his hands. Excuse me, but who are you? Cutter Slade, the guy from Outcast. What are you doing here? Don't know yet. What does that mean? Are you nuts? <laughs> Maybe. Ask him. I can see only you. Sorry. There. Go ahead. Ask him. Excuse me, sir, but what is this Outcast? Outcast is the first video game that really tries to be an interactive movie. Not only have we tried to play with movements, with shapes and animation at all levels of the game, but above all, we gave it intelligence. It's enormous. Three years of production. It's a huge budget with major goals. It's going to be a turning point in the video game industry. One of the qualities of Outcast is its visual originality, and that comes from its initial visual design, as well as from the technological constraints. Together with Frank and Eve, we wanted to give the game a richness and a depth, and that meant mixing lots of different technologies, a multidisciplinary approach. We wanted to go beyond the usual indoor scenery game, beyond games that only have walls. We wanted real landscapes. The key word for the graphic designers was realism. At the beginning, the five worlds were built with 128 different tiles. So the important thing was to link them and match them up for 3D continuity. All the technology developed for the game gives a lot of advantages for the on-screen display of fine details. We chose to go for high-quality, realistic details right from the start, so we tried to vary as many things as possible to avoid tedious repetitions. The voxel technology appealed to us immediately because it would allow us to deal with almost infinite landscape complexity. We wanted a quality of rendering that wasn't available with traditional technologies. And once we put the environment and everything together, we were like, hey, that's Cutter, there he is, alive and kicking. That was the outstanding moment. In the early stages, someone was in charge of sketching out the characters on paper. I know that for Marion, for example, I had a lot of fun adding them up. I made almost 200 roughs. And it's true, in the end, I was so familiar with them all, I was saying to myself, he's my child. But it was really important for Outcast to have very diverse characters. We have over 65 different characters in the game, uh, and what we've tried to do is make it so that each character uh, interacts with the other characters as well as you. Once the character research was over, the drawings were scanned. And once that was done, the modeling artist used them to create a 3D polygonal model. In the beginning, I used splines to follow the artist's lines. Then, I use a technique that allows me to build polygons following the splines. And finally, when the modeling and the skeleton are done, we can start working on texture mapping. In fact, for some of Outcast's characters and objects, we also use bump mapping. I'll show you how it works on this t-shirt. 
Here's the traditional texture map. And then we add the bump. And here it is. And this technique allows us to add various information, creases on the clothes, wrinkles, muscles, and so on. An important factor in the final result is animation. That's what gives this realistic aspect to the characters in the game. Now I'm dressing up for motion capture. I'm placing sensors on my body. The sensors are detected by the computer, which will translate my movements to on-screen animation. I'm really lending my muscles to Cutter. Motion capture is an important part of Outcast. It represents a total of 20 hours. I don't mean capture time, but animation time in the game. There are two other animation techniques in the game. One is the traditional keyframe animation, and the other one is procedural animation, which allows real-time modifications of the keyframed and motion-captured animation. When you're in the virtual world of Outcast, you get to meet characters with real depth. Artificial intelligence allows a codification of reactions and emotions according to given situations. That's what brings interactivity to the game. We really tried to give a social dimension to the characters. And thanks to this interactivity, we were able to build the quests in the game according to the characters. In order to complete the mission, you have to meet people, fight with them, you'll be afraid, you're going to laugh, you'll have to tell jokes. But in the end, you will find the purpose of your quest. And in fact, a video game really is a virtual quest. And so, to give the player some references, we created a strong script like in a movie. What was very important for the scenario was the meeting with Douglas Fries. He really had the cinematographical background we needed. Uh, I gotta go to a meeting now, so... If that's okay, I gotta finish this and... The original idea of the game was a non-linear game. We've always had that in mind. Uh, otherwise, it was gonna be just five worlds and you went and did separate things. But we didn't have anything that linked it together and now we do with the uh, dramatic storyline that goes through the game. It was, very, it was very helpful actually working with a team whose English is not their first language because it really helped me to focus the language down and everybody to be able to understand. As soon as Cutter enters the world, you're not having to learn uh, how to walk again or, or how to speak again. It's, it's very comfortable. Today, Cutter Slade is truly the most sophisticated success with respect to immersion in a completely free-flowing virtual world. Yeah, yeah, I know. Big as a house, leaps tall mountains in a single bound, blah, blah, blah. What we would like is for Cutter to be everybody's dream. I think that when he was young, he was sitting in the back of the classroom and hitting the ones in front. Well, there are six main weapons in the game. Basically, they were all designed to be used in very different ways. Uh, some of the gadgets we have are, are very, uh, they're very fun. The visibility is my favorite one. Wow. When a bullet whizzes past, you can really hear the sound moving with it. That's called environmental audio. Inside this house, you hear the corresponding resonance. And now if we go outside, the same sound has a different color. Frank creates the sound. I place them and eventually adapt them according to the needs of the game. There are 350 sounds in Outcast, all created in this small studio. All the voices, all the screaming, every character sound is performed by a corresponding actor. We cast female voices and male voices, tried to give them an accent, tried to make them act older, younger, etc. What you gonna do? Charge me for smoking? Cutter? Well, I reckon he's a joker. 
The music gives the game a real action-adventure movie side to it. So we worked with the composer and recorded the score with the Moscow Symphony Orchestra. The mix of music in Outcast is um, a large mix, a uh, varied mix of uh, some classical elements, uh, some very exotic or esoteric elements. Something esoteric is when you're in the city world, it's sort of a Middle Eastern, very exotic sort of uh, landscape. So the way I create an exotic landscape musically is I use uh, an instrument called the duduk, which is an Armenian uh, instrument. In the forest world, I use African percussion, uh, talking drum, djembe, um, African kungas. Uh, in uh, the marsh world, uh, it's a very foggy world, so I use low woodwinds at the bottom of their register, and they're like way down there, just like, wow, like fog, just creating a, a mood that helps immediately put you in the world. Infogram's motion marketing team has been working with the development team of Outcast right from the start of production. We've started with upfront marketing, made a lot of focus groups, consumer testing, and we tried to implement the features of the game according to the results of these focus groups. The second step was working on a strategic platform worldwide. From the beginning we knew that it would be a flagship for the group, so we've decided to aim at two targets, the hardcore gamers community and uh, the mass market. Our objective in terms of sales is huge and uh, to help us and to help the territories uh, reach this objective, we've decided to spend three million US dollars. Outcast will be in the forefront everywhere. Specialist magazines, cover-mounted demos, internet sites, promotions, contests. You will have a lot of trade advertising. And last but not least, you will find Outcast also in movie theaters, which is quite exceptional for a PC game, with the 30-second commercials linked with the Super Hollywoodian production. Outcast clearly illustrates iMotion's philosophy, which is to give to the audience the kind of entertainment, the kind of quality of entertainment they're used to when they read a book or go to the cinema, which means to create real scenario, real synopsis, and real characters. I want to join in the fun. But you don't have a weapon. You don't know as much about me as you think, Slade. For us, the creation of character is clearly what we wanted to explore. We felt that it is the new frontier for video game experience, and Outcast just clearly passed it. Outcast is a new game in a new style. We want video games to go one step further. The game is centered on four main axes, beauty, wonder, realism, and immersion. The overall quality of what we got in the end is well above our hopes at the start. Outcast is a super production, but it will go further. There will be a before Outcast and an after Outcast, but I do hope it will also have lots of descendants in the future. You bet. Et voilà, a new entertainment concept. A lot has been said, but the mystery remains. Now, everything is in your hands, and we want you to be cut Slade. You want me to do what? We are trying to give this character some sex appeal. Are you insane? I love it, this is great. I just can't do this, you keep smiling. Damn it, sorry. Again! Oh.